Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're here to celebrate Sunday morning, the goodness of God in this day. I love that you guys love to talk to each other and visit, but it's time to get on, the, on with things. So I welcome you to the house of the Lord today. Thank you for bringing the presence of the Lord with you. Hope you know that. You are a vessel of the Holy Spirit. Let me pray, and we're going to do the confessions. Father God, we thank you for the opportunity today to come into your presence. Lord, if we, if we have something to give, we bring it. If we need something, we ask that we give it and receive it today. We ask that you have your way in the service today, Father God. And then as we speak these confessions, Father God, that they are, we are speaking life. We are speaking into our own existence and the existence of others. And we thank you for today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. These are the 2021 confessions. If my phone cooperates. And repeat after me, please. In 2021, I am plugged in to God's purpose and God's spirit and to God's presence. I take ownership and responsibility of my purpose in the kingdom. My life is crucified. I no longer live, but my Lord and Savior lives in me. I will accomplish God's purpose. I will accomplish God's purpose in my life this year. In my life this year. Therefore, I'm dedicated. Dedicated. I'm discipled. I'm discipled. I'm devoted. I'm devoted. And it starts with me. It starts with me. Give the Lord praise. Well, good morning, ELC. It is so good to be back with you this morning. We're just going to... I was reading this morning in my devotion um, in Isaiah, and he said, in the year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. I wonder if, as Christians today, if we still see the Lord high and lifted up above situations, above feelings, above circumstances? Do we see the Lord high and lifted up? Because I tell you this, our God, he can't be stopped. The dog tried to hide you and steal you away. They try to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you. He tried, but he lost. Yeah. You cannot be stopped. When we cried for freedom, you tore down the walls. The weight of our burdens, you carried it all. Yeah, our fears and failures. Our fears and our failures hang dead on a cross. You cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has tried over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. We stand on your victory and shout out your praise. Miracle maker, you're mighty to save. Awesome in power, relentless in love. Yeah. 
you cannot be stopped. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains, Jesus says try over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. I like this part. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is no thing. There is no thing. Sing it again. There's nothing. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is no thing. There is no thing. No. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There is no thing. There is no mover of mount. Breaker of chains, Jesus has tried over the grave. Sing hallelujah, the battle is won. Nothing can stand against our God. Yep, you can get them together. You can put them together. We're here to celebrate the King of Kings. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Yeah. I've been leaving signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over. My name is registered in heaven. My praise, my praise belongs to you forever. This is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Here we go. Come together, sons and daughters. Bought with blood and washed in water. Yeah. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Our God will finish what he started. Yeah. Said our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote my story. Testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. All right, here we go. I like this. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. 
this is my testimony from dead to life because grace rewrote my story i'll testify by jesus christ the righteous i'm justified this is my testimony this is my testimony this is my testimony If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Hallelujah. Good morning, good oh, morning. We're going to continue our celebration. Again, I want to welcome you. This is our time of tithe and offering. And we want to contribute to celebrate what God has done for you. It's an opportunity to give. If you are needing, it's a time to give. Why? Because God takes care of your needs. There's a number on the screen. There's offering buckets in the back. And I just encourage you today to bless the Lord no matter what your situation. Because God's always there for you, right? So honor him today. Worship him today with your tithes and offerings. Thank you. Now listen, ELC, that, that verse that we just sang, if I'm not dead, you're not done. I just believe that a few people in here Somebody in here could grab onto that. God's not done with you. If you're still breathing, there's still purpose. So we're going to sing that again, but I want you to sing that from a place where you believe that. Here we go. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. This is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. I was going to wait, but I'm going to share this now. Before he said that, wow, I got echo. I was going to share something today about Genesis 2. And I'm going to read it to you because I think it goes with what he just said. And you got to get excited about this, okay? Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils Woo! the breath of life, that part, and he became that part. a living being. Now, that was before I even came in here today, and then when he said that, I just couldn't wait to tell you that. God's got a plan and purpose for you. You are but dust if it wasn't for the things of God, if it wasn't for the breath of life. So let's worship him like we're not done yet. Like God's got a plan, a purpose for you. And because he breathed life in you from that time, from that time way back in Genesis, he's still performing the things that he wants to do in your life. So don't give up. God's got a plan for you. He breathed life into you. and He breathed your spirit into you today. So let's celebrate like he did, okay? And I tell you what, the only reason I'm not running around this room is because I got to play this piano. But... ELC is a church that praises God. So y'all are free. You don't have to stay in your seats. You don't have to be so dignified with your praise because Jesus gave it all. 
He gave it all for you and me. So let's sing that again. Say, if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I be- let's go. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Hey, this is my testimony from death to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. And I tell you, my testimony was I was a sinner, lost in my sin, on my way to hell, trying to kill myself. But I'm not dead. He's not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe I'm not dead. He's not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. Hey, I'm not dead. You're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe I'm not dead. You're not done. Greater things are still to come. This is my testimony from death to life. Because grace rewrote woo, that part. I'll testify by Jesus Christ. The yeah. I'm testifying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of hell. I lean not on my own understanding, yeah. My life is the hands of the maker sing it again i lean i lean not on my own understanding my life is in the hands of the maker of hell i lean i lean i lean not on my own understanding kick on the two and the four my life is in the hands of the maker I give it all, and I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Sing, I lean not. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean, I lean not on my own understanding. No, my life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. I give it all. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something beautiful out of me. Sing this. So I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb 
this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my... This is why we sing this. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. Because I'm holding on to you. Sing that. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. Because I'm holding on to you. Nothing I. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. Because I'm holding on to you, Jesus. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. There's nothing I hold on to. Because I'm holding on to you. I will climb. So I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands. They used to sing this in, in, in the old church. I need the old, I need thee. Every hour. I need thee, oh, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Sing it again. I need thee, oh. I need thee every hour. I need thee, yeah. Oh, bless me now, precious Savior. I So we say yes, 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 oh yes. And I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Can we sing that together? Say, I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing, I sing praises to your name. Praises to your name, oh Lord, for your name, for your name 
name is great and greatly to be prayed. There is power in your name. Oh, Lord, power in your name. Oh, Lord, for your name, for your name is great and greatly to be prayed. There's healing. There is healing in your name. Hey. Oh, Lord, healing in your name. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, for your name is great. For your name is great and greatly to be prayed for your name is great your name is great for your name is great and greatly to be prayed sing it again for your name is great for your name is great and greatly to be prayed. So God, we sing, we say, Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. That's all it says. Sing, sing. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. And worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve, you deserve my praise. Worthy is your name, worthy, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. See, sometimes I think we get confused about which God we're talking about. <laughs> we're talking about the same God that parted the Red Sea. We're talking about the same God that raised Christ from the grave. <laughs> We're talking about the same God that saw fit to save you and me. <laughs> Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve my praise. Make it personal. Worthy is your name. Worthy, worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve my, you deserve my prayer, every bit of it. Worthy is your name, worthy, worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve my praise. Worthy is your name, worthy is your name. Jesus. You deserve my praise. Worthy is your name. So we cry holy with the angels. We cry holy with the angels. We cry holy. With the angels we cry holy, yeah. With the angels we cry holy. 
With the angels we cry holy. Take this time to give him your personal praise. <laughs> your own personal worship song. Yeah, yeah. We cry holy. You deserve my praise. You deserve my devotion. You deserve my affection. You deserve my praise. One last time, say, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve my praise. Worthy is your name, worthy, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve my praise. Worthy is your name. And we give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Lord, we give you the highest praise. Jesus, our Savior, you are worthy of it all. Let's sing that simple anthem. We give you, say, we give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Father, we give you the highest praise. Jesus, our Savior, you are worthy of it all. Come on, we give you, say, we give you the highest praise. We give you the highest praise. Father, we give you the highest praise. Jesus, I say, you are worthy of it all. Jesus, our Savior, you are worthy of it all. Jesus, I say, you are worthy of it So what could I say and what could I do to offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? So what could I so what can I say? And what can I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you? One more time, what can I say? So what can I say? And what could I do but offer this heart, oh God, completely new.
Here we go. Sing this. Say, I'll stand with arms high and heart open in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. I am is your. All right, Sean, give me the kick. I'll stand, I'll stand <clears throat> with arms high and heart open, oh yeah, in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. I am is your. All right, let's go. Say, I'll stand, I'll stand. Arms high and heart up and oh yeah, in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all. I am is your somebody says, say all I am, say all I am is yours everything i am say all i am is yours so what could i say and what could i do but offer this heart oh god completely to you so what could I so what could I say and what could I do but offer this heart oh God completely What can you say? Um, what we're going to do now is unplanned, but God knew we we're going to do it. Amen. Amen. Um, we have some individuals who are going to college. Here are the next. Some of them are already there. Some of them are going this week. And so we, we, we always pray over our, our folks who are leaving. Uh, to um, bless them and to make sure that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is on them. And so we know that um, Rowan Jr. is already up in Wisconsin. He's, he's, uh, he's up there with his parents. They left yesterday, a couple days ago. And Rihanna Wallace, uh, who's Byron's sister, is leaving for college on Friday. And then there's another little girl who's leaving for college on Tuesday. I can't remember her name right now, but she looks like my wife. And so what I want to do is um, the Wallace is already there, so um, Rebecca is Rob's. Okay, okay, cool, awesome. So they're going to be live streaming, so they'll be able to take part. So if we could have our pastors and ministers come up real quick here, and also Marissa and, and Pastor Margaret can come up real quick too. Thank you, Jesus. Randy, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Diana, praise God, praise God, praise God. And uh, Jerry, can you get a full shot of everybody up here? Cool, awesome. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> Thank you, Father. So what I want y'all to do is, um, let's see here. Let me get my act straight here. Um, let's go ahead and pray for Jayla real quick, and then we'll get to the Wallaces. So, Jayla, if you can come stand right here. This is my favorite daughter. She's leaving on Tuesday for Trinity Christian College in Chicago. And so this is a moment that my wife and I prayed for before she was born. And I know I'll be crying next year when my son leaves, too. So 
But um, if you guys, if you all could just lay hands on her. And Pastor Margaret, if you could get some oil real quick and anoint her. And um, and we're going to do the same for VJ and, and, and Ray real quick, too. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shauna, can you do this, please, for me, sister? Thank you, Father God. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for Jayla R.A. Campers. That you guide her, that you give her wisdom, discernment, that you give her everything that you've given her, Lord, and that she sees it, she knows that she used it, Father, and that she is leaving this part of the country, this, this season in her life, for greater things that you have prearranged for her, Father. We thank you, Father God, that as she leaves, angels are there already in her dorm room, on the airplane, with her friends, her future friends, her coach Lenars, who loves her so much. We thank you, Father God, that whatever she does, Lord, it is ordained by you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that angels are around her to protect her like it's already been prophesied. I thank you, Father God, that no weapon formed against her will prosper. I thank you, Father God, that she is a woman of God and that she will uphold herself as such. I thank you, Father God, that her grades are stellar, her soccer skills are incredible, but her heart is for you, Father God, that she has hunger for you, that she's humble for you, Father God, and that she doesn't make me and my wife proud, that she makes you proud, Father God. So, Father God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this day. I thank you, Lord, for, for answering me and my wife's prayers and that my daughter is so excited, Father God, and that you will give her everything, Lord, her heart's desires in your season, Father. We thank you, Father God, and we praise your name, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, REA. Alexis, if you can come here and stand in, in the gap for your brother since you all have the same blood. And um, we're going to be praying for VJ and Ray. Hallelujah. This is Alexis Bouye. We thank you, Father God, that she is the oldest sister of Rayanna and VJ. I thank you, Father God, that as we lay hands on her, we're laying hands on the whole clan. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that VJ is going to go there and excel. He has already things laid out for him, Father God, that his mother and father have prayed, Father, and that he will excel in English, in, in math, and in, in anything that he's bad at, God, he's good at now, Lord. I think that he's already making an example right now for you, that he glorifies you, Lord, in everything that he does, and that he walks by faith and not by sight, Father God. I think that he will not be injured in football, that he'll play all four years and excel. I think that his grades are strong. His academic prowess is there, Lord, and that you will allow people to come into his life and bless him, that his mother and father are at peace with where he is and who he's around, Lord, that you bring him godly friends, just like with Jayla, godly friends who will give him supernatural peer pressure to lead and guide, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you Rayanna as she goes into her second year, Lord, in Arkansas that she walks by faith, not by sight, Lord, that all the freshman foolishness is out of her. We thank you, Father God, that she lives to serve you, Father God, that she lives to honor you, Lord, and that her heart is for you in every area, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that whatever she is called to do, she's doing now, and that she will walk in blessing and peace, Father, in every area of her life. We thank you, Lord, for Jayla Campers, for Viren Jr. Wallace, and for Rihanna Wallace, Lord, who are going off again this year. And for the first time, we give you all honor and all glory, Lord. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Andrew, come. Come, Andrew, come. Yes, I didn't know. Anybody else going off to college this year here locally? And, and our online family? If, uh Bruce, I'll have you pray for him. Online family, if you have anyone going to college, we this prayer is for them too. Amen. Father God, we come before your throne room right now. Lord, we lift up our brother Andrew. We pray, God, that you use him as a mighty influence for you on his campus. Lord, as he's finishing out his studies and he's moving on to 
bigger and better things, God. I pray, God, that you give him a passion and a desire to do your work, no matter what you have him doing in the world. I pray, God, that he is successful in your ministry, which will make him successful in his pursuit of whatever he is pursuing. Lord, I pray that you give him wisdom beyond his comprehension, that you give him perseverance as he goes through testings and he goes through licensings. God, be with him. Place your angels about him. Father, may he give you praise and glory, knowing that it is because of you that he has success. We pray in your son's precious and holy name. Amen. And we're going to, and uh, for our online family and also y'all here, we're going to pray over our teachers next week and all of our kids going back to school. So we do that every year. Uh, so, hey amen. I'm exhausted. Here you go. Good morning. Derwin, that was a, just a beautiful um, worship this morning. So we just want to transition and just really welcome. If you're new here this morning, you got a taste of just our family life. We take care of family. We pray for family. And this is a family community church. So we just want to welcome anyone here that might be new this morning. Just welcome to Empowered Life Church. Um, we would like to know who you are. And so if you are here and you're willing to raise your hand if you're brand new, we would love to see your hand so that we can give you a special packet and we'll get some lights up and we'll get a spotlight on you and all that. No, I'm kidding. So if there's anyone new, just let us know. We just want to welcome, love on you this morning. And just again, welcome to Empowered Life Church today. We are going to be transitioning into our love time. Um, so we're going to give you a little bit of space to have um, a cup of coffee, give a couple hugs, and then come back here for a great word from Pastor Blaine this morning. And can we welcome back Pastor Jerry and Pastor Tony this morning? We miss them when they're gone. So, all right, we will see you back here in five minutes. Everyone say that, five minutes. See ya.
righty. Well, good morning, Empowered Life Church. Welcome back from love time. Hallelujah. Why don't y'all open your Bibles real quick to Acts chapter 1. I'm going to throw you off real fast as we go to our announcements. Welcome back our online family. Missed you guys. Glad y'all were able to join us this morning. And I'm going to share with y'all just a few announcements. I know you're used to seeing someone much prettier with red hair, but I'm doing my best. Do my best imitation of Shauna. So, um, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, real quick, um, every year, uh oh. There we go. <laughs> if you didn't see that online, we had like the merry-go-round of kids running around. It's all good, though. It's all good. Kids being kids. All right. You have, um, I'm going to talk about the fall fast real quick. Every year, as we just, as I just shared with you earlier, we have our fall fast. And during our fall fast, we spend that whole week fasting. Uh, most of us do a Daniel fast. I want you guys to pray on the fast that God wants you all to do. But every fall, we call a, a, a fall fast to pray over our, our teachers, to pray over our kids, pray over our administrators, pray over our, our school employees, because as you know, our schools need prayer. And so, and our kids need prayer, and our teachers need prayer. And so, that is going to be um, this, this, actually this next week, um, well not next week, but August 16th through the 20th. Now, as we go through Acts, let's look at Acts real quick. Acts chapter 1 and verse... Four. It says, "This is this is this is action." It says, "And being assembled, everyone said assemble, said again assembled." It says, "And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem." Right now, Las Vegas is our Jerusalem. Amen. Okay, but to wait for the promise of the Father, and then you skip down to verse seven. And it says, it is not for you to know the times and the season which the Father has put on his own authority. But you shall receive, it won't say power, power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all of Pahrump, California, Oregon, and anywhere you go in the earth. Amen. Amen? And so this fast, we're going to really emphasize, we want you all to learn how to pray in tongues. We want you all to be endued with power so that you can move forward with God's plan. We want you to be able to move boldly, move with strength, authority, wisdom, discernment, and that can come the quickest by learning how to pray in tongues. And you go, well, I don't know how. Here's what we're going to do. My wife and I are so passionate about praying in tongues is that Monday the 16th, let me just go back to my page here. Monday the 16th, that's the first night of the fast, we're going to be here at 6 o'clock. The fasting or the prayer will start at 6.30, and we want you to come early. If you don't know how to pray in tongues, you will learn that night. We're going to take you through a quick class of how to pray in tongues, and we our prayers that you will learn by 6.30. Amen? <laughs> because we want to teach you how to receive the gift of tongues. It is a gift that God has given you. You have to want it to receive it, and then it is, it, it is not like pulling teeth. It is the most beautiful thing in the world. And so we want to invite you to come at 6 o'clock. We'll keep announcing every single week. 6 o'clock on the 16th, that's a Monday night, and my wife and I will walk you through this. And there will be no shame, no embarrassment. We're going to learn how to pray mysteries, learn how to pray things out that you don't know how to pray out. Amen? Come on, amen? Now, if that scares you, good. Come and learn how to do it. I don't know how. You will learn how. It is awesome. So that's number one. Number two, as we have a culture shift, we're moving into a new realm, a new season. We want you guys to be a part of this. And so we want you all to take a next steps class. Now, everyone who's on our list should have gotten a text earlier. And that's a registration to this next step class. We want you all to register. Well, what does that mean? Go online, sign your name. It's going to be August the 29th at around 1.30. We want to introduce you to this new season of Empowered Life Church. 
We're going to be doing things a little bit different. We're going to have a new shift, but not a change, a shift. And we want you either here or online. So whether you can be here or not, we want you to be able to take this class. It's an hour and a half, two hours long at the most. But it will introduce you to our new processes. Amen? So before that, we're going to eat, as we do, because we're in Power Life Church. That's at 1230 after church. So 1230, we'll have a food truck out there. It will be awesome. 130, we'll come back in here, and we'll talk about next steps. Amen? Amen. If you are married, your one desire should be to make sure that you are being to your spouse what God has called you to be to your spouse. That is it. It is not to be sexy. It is not to be sweet or nice. Marriage is not to make you happy. It's to make you holy. And sometimes in the process of marriage, you don't really like the person you're married to. Hope that lasts for about a day, and then you move on. <laughs> Dang, Dante. Wow. Okay, easy, brother. Easy, easy. So, <laughs> okay, okay, Pastor Blaine will be teaching. All right, let me get it. So, anyway, we're going to have a, a uh, Empire Life Couples Night. It's, it's uh, September 12th at 530. That's a, is that Saturday night or Sunday? Sunday night, it's $10 per person, so 20 bucks a couple. Um, if you need child care, let us know. But we have a pizza party here. We're going to share some things, talk about some things, grow as married people in Christ. Amen? Unfortunately, the, the, the divorce rate for, for Christians is higher than the heathen. So we've got to stop that, okay? And last but not least, we have two more. We have our men's retreat. That's going to be uh, September 17th to the 19th, 35 bucks. See Joe Kirsch, see Pastor Blaine, or V, who's uh, in, uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, it's awesome. It's going to be um, then, and then also our ladies' retreat. Woo! I won't be there. Oh yeah, kind of will. Um, it'll be, hallelujah, October the eighth through the tenth in Caliente because our ladies are hot. So uh, it'll be in Caliente, Nevada, and uh, you can see Rebecca, Shauna, uh, or anyone else who wants to help you. So amen. Amen. I'm, it's good to be back. We missed y'all a ton. We had a great time. God moved in our lives, and so we're excited. Pastor Blaine, let's, let's come rock it. Amen. All right. Everything's on. What is good? Praise God. How's everybody this morning? I know some people should be really fresh, spending all that time at the ocean like they did. Yeah, buddy. I got to get opened up here. Uh, before I get started. I'll just use this one here. Jayla, the Lord gave me this, and I need you to hear this because he wants you to hear it. And it's in Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. And verse 9, and it says, Only be strong and very courageous, that you may observe and do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you know, or you my, um, that you may prosper wherever you go. And the key for me there is wherever you go. And verse 9 says, I have, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so in that, don't be afraid. Don't fear what's ahead of you. Know that God has a purpose and a plan. And his plan is to watch over you, it is to protect you, and to let you know that he is with you. He is with you. Okay, do you, do you understand that? Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? That he is with you wherever you go. 
That means Chicago, he's there with you. You're not alone. You don't have to do this alone. And I just want to encourage you in that way because it's, it's just, you know, knowing that you have God, knowing that he is with you wherever you go. And that goes for all of you guys that are going off to college, especially when you leave an area and you go into a next one. But this was specifically for uh, Jayla. Praise God. So this morning, we're starting off in uh, 1 John, and I know that Pat spoke last week on 1 John 1. I'm speaking on 1 John 2 today, and then next Sunday, 1 John 3. And so I want to encourage you in this way that, that you, we understand that this is a love book. This chapter is all about love, and the, the whole book of 1 John is about love. And if I was to title this message, it is, His Love Covers Our Sin. His love covers our sin. And some people, well, I don't have sin. Well, don't lie to yourself, okay? Just know that we all do. Love is the key. Love is the key. No matter who we are, no matter where we go, love is the key. Love is the key to relationships. Love is the key to marriage. Love is the key to the relationship with God. I know that Pastor Jerry says that you don't have to be sexy for your spouse, but th you still got to be a little sexy. You still got to be, and I'm talking about Pastor Jerry, okay? He needs to be a little sexy for his bride, okay? But that's the reality of love is that we need to be loving, we need to be compassionate, we need to be kind. We need to be willing to acknowledge what's going on around us. See, we're going to look at how love how the love of God through the life and death of his son, Jesus Christ, affects us. I have three or four verses that I'm going to kind of hit on, and, and we need to understand that three of these verses right off the top are in the same book of the Bible, and that is John. They're in, two, uh, in different chapters, uh, but we need to see this, and it says this, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also love one another. Okay, did you hear that? As I've loved you, you love others. As I've loved you, I love others. You know, the last time I spoke, I said something about who everybody was. No matter who you were, no matter what you were, no matter how you identified, no matter how any of these things are, the word says that we are to love everyone. Boy, it's quiet. You have a hard time with that? Anybody have a hard time loving people? Look at that. Hands are going up. And if you're truthful and you're honest, you're going to say, yeah, I do. Because there are things sometimes that you don't like. And, and, th and that's our prejudice. That we say, oh, I can't do it. No, nope, sorry. But the truth is we love one another. And in John 15, 12, it says, and this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Again, it, it, it says it again. And so who did Jesus, who does Jesus, or who did Jesus love? Is that you, Joe? Who does Jesus love? That's a question. I'm looking for an answer, but not from Pastor Jerry. Who? does Jesus love? What? All of us, everyone, okay? we ha Listen, that was an easy question. I mean, if you were in a class, that should be like, boom. No questions asked. I know this. Everyone without exception. Everyone without exception. There is no exception that Jesus is love. We put the exceptions in there. Oh, I can't love that person because they're, I can't love that person because they're, I can't love that person because he's wearing a Giants jersey. That should be Dodgers, brother. <laughs> Listen, here's another verse. This is powerful. This is so very, very true, and we need to know this because this is truly how much God loves you. It says in Romans 5.8, it says, But God shows his love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Christ died for us. This verse is so very important to us as he clarifies the love of God towards us and every one of his creation without discrimination, without putting any, you know, kind of context of, of saying only except for he loves us. He loves everyone because God, if we think about it, everyone is God's creation. Nobody is left out of that creation. And so now we're going to start to look at 1 John, and I wanted us to understand first how much God loves us and how much God cares about us because he did so much for us and he continues to do so much for us. And sometimes we allow ourselves to get lost in that, and then we have our hang-ups. we got to get rid of the hang-ups. 1 John, w- verses 1 and 2 say this, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not only for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole, entire, complete world. Amen? Again. For who? The whole world. We got to get that in our heads, okay? We got to get that concept because we are judgmental. We are taught that by nature. We are taught that, oh, don't like people that are of color. Don't like people that uh, do drugs. Don't like people that do this or don't like people that do that. And and, and, then that's not God. God says we don't want to make a practice of hanging out with those people because he doesn't want us to be corrupted by that. But he doesn't say that we are to love them and encourage them and help them. We are the ones who put those barriers up. See, Jesus' love covers a multitude of sin, and as is the one who stands in the gap. Remember we talked about standing in the gap? It's that little gap that goes between the subway and the, and the, the, the walkway to get onto the subway. And that's called, it, it says on there a lot of times, mind the gap. It says, watch your step. But I love the fact that it says, mind the gap, because it's telling us to be careful when we step over. We have to be careful when we walk with Jesus that we do as Jesus commanded us. So it says, stand in the gap for us. He is our propitiation. Now you're going, what's a, what's a propitiation? Which is a, the appeasement of divine wrath by a sacrificial offering. Is the appeasement, it is the... It is the uh, forgiveness of divine wrath by this a, a, a sacrifice, a divine sacrifice, a, a perfect sacrifice, which was and is Jesus. Nothing of what we can do, only of what he can do. Jesus has already taken our sin. Now listen, this is important that we hear this because Jesus has already taken our sin and our penalty with him onto the cross and to the grave. This is so important for us to understand this because you could be sitting in this this church right now, in this gathering of, of, of believers, and you could be sitting here right now and never have professed Jesus Christ as Lord. And you need to know that your sins were already forgiven for you. Your sins were already covered under the blood of Christ. The key to receiving his forgiveness is asking him into your heart. That's it. You've already been forgiven. It's like if somebody says, hey, I got a gift for you. Okay. Got a gift for me? (laughs) There's a gift over here on this. It made me think of that. I have a gift for you. The only way you can get the gift is if you take it. It has to be somebody saying, hey, I have a gift for you. And then you have to take it. If you don't take it, you don't have it. And if you don't have it, it's not my fault. It's not God's fault. It's your fault. Because we did not take the gift. You did not take the gift. But the gift is there. The gift is there. 1 John 2, 4 and 6 says this. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commands is a liar. That's pretty harsh. And the truth is not in him, but whoever keeps his command, uh, his word 
in him, truly the love of God is perfected. By this, we may know that th- we are in him, and whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. In other words, again, let's go back to the verse that I, I started off with at the beginning in John, not First John, that says that love as I have loved you. Love as I have loved you. It is so important for us to understand that God loves you. He cares for you. He died for you. He gave it all up just for you. You could be the only person on the earth that he did it for. And guess what he did for you? He did it for you. Too many times we get hung up. Oh, I, I can't. No, God's not going to forgive me. Bull donkey. Bull donkey. He did it for you. No matter what you did, there's nothing that you can do that God's going to say, I can't forgive you. And we're going to kind of talk about this at our men's retreat coming up. And by the way, let me plug Saturday because, you know, that didn't get in there. Saturday at Dave Hinckley's house. Dave, raise your hand. If you don't know where he lives, talk to him. He'll give you the address. I put it out in what I can put it out to you, the people that I have. Um, It's at 8 o'clock, men's breakfast. So we want to encourage you to come because we're just believing for God to do great things. But this, it it goes on to say, um, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we know, we may know that we are in him, and whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in this way in which he walked. Now that word perfected, it, it hangs people up sometimes. We get hung up on that word perfected or perfect, and that word meaning is the it is bringing to maturity or perfecting. That is the process of growth in knowledge and in the love of God. So understand, when, when you see the word that says, per, you know, that we need to be perfect as he is perfect, it means that we are to mature, we are to develop into the character of Christ. We are to start to step in the way that he stepped. We are to walk in the way that he walked. We are to speak in the way that he spoke. We're not to get caught up in ourselves and say, oh, I can't do that. It's like sometimes we get lost because we don't want to do the things that God's called us to do. 1 John 9 I mean, 1 John 2, 9 through 11, it says this. Whoever says that he is in the light. Now, this is good. And we, th- I'm going to focus on this for a couple of seconds. But it says, whoever says that he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light. And in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in, dar- in the darkness and walks in the darkness and, the, and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So understand, who's your brother? Who's your brother? Is Pastor Jerry my brother? Yeah, he's just my brother from another mother, right? Is is, uh, Dave here my brother? Yeah. I'm going to go to guys, okay, because I can't ask you if you're my brother. You could be my sister, but you can't be my brother. We got that, right? And so, all right, so let's do this. I want to do it this way, too. Are you my brother? No. Are you my brother? Biblically, yes. Because the term brother is also standing in the gap for brother and sister. Okay? So understand, we're not, listen, we got to get away from this, this gender thing for a moment and understand what it's talking about when it says that who is my brother. Everyone is our brother. And, let's say, and, and I have no problem saying sister also. Okay? Don't get me wrong on that. But you don't see that. But we have to understand that that's what it's saying. Everyone. No matter what, no matter who you are, you are my brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ, okay? So if I hate you, that means the people on the street that you don't like because they're doing things bad and you hate them, you're in a, you're in a very bad place. Why can I say that? Because they are God's creation. And if they're God's creation, you can't hate them. That means you're in the darkness. Do you follow me? That means that your, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, your, your uh, ex-boyfriend, or the person that hurt you, molested you, abused you, whatever, all the things that you can go through, God cares about that. But what he's saying is you still need to love them. 
You don't have to like what they've done. You know, trust me, I've been there. I've been molested. I've been abused. I've gone through all that stuff. And I had to learn to love and ask God to forgive them so that they could come to know him. That's more important than my feelings. That is more important than my feelings. So when we look at the at light, it characterizes love. You hear me? When we look, look at light, it characterizes love. And when we look at darkness, it, cares, it characterizes hate or vice versa. Okay? So what is darkness? What is darkness? What's that? Say it louder. It's the absence of light. Okay? It's the absence of light. But I'm going to take it a little bit further because as I was doing this, this I had to wake up this morning and add this verse so you guys don't, you won't see it. But this is this verse that I have. It's in John 8, 12. And it says, again, I, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So what is darkness in our lives? What is darkness in our lives? It's the absence of Jesus. It is the absence of Jesus. If, if, if he says in this verse that he is the light of the world, and he says that if you walk, if you don't, if you, uh, whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but you will be in the light. If you have Jesus and you've asked him in your heart, he's residing inside of you, then that means that you're walking in the light. So get yourselves out of the darkness. We need to get ourselves out of the darkness, and we need to focus on the light. We need to focus on Christ. So what is darkness in our lives? It's the absence of Jesus. Jesus. If, there, if, 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 you're, if there's the, just a total definition when you walk into a room, if it's dark, it's only the absence of light. But the moment you flick on a light switch... We have this little, in our bathroom, or where the seats are, in our bedrooms over here, we have one of those little plug-in that comes on when the darkness happens. So there's a little bit of light. I don't like total darkness. I'm afraid of the dark. When I was a little kid, I used to curl up underneath a, a, a little like coffee table or whatever you'd call it at the, the end table at the cou- on, by, the, by the couch. My mom would be working, and she worked nights, and she wouldn't. We didn't have a babysitter, and I was six years old, maybe seven, maybe younger. I'd coil up underneath that little coffee table and sleep. As soon as I heard my mom drive up, I'd wake up and run to my bed. I just that my wife's heard this story several times, and there's and it's just because when I was a kid, I was alone. But now I have Jesus. 1 John 5, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, uh, he, the love of the Father is not in him. For, that the, for all that in the, is in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life. If not for the Father, but it is not from the Father, I'm sorry, but it's from the world, and the world is passing away, along with its desires. But whoever does the will of the Father abides forever. What does that mean? It means that you accept Christ, you acknowledge Him as Lord and Savior, you start to follow Him, and you start to forget about the the lust of the flesh, the, the, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. And it means that you start to focus on Jesus. It means that you, you have Him into your heart and your life, this doesn't mean that you haven't sinned or anything like that. That's not what we're talking about. We already heard that he forgives those who have sinned if they're walking with him. And so what happens is, is that we have the gift of eternal life. Eternal life. That's why it says that, we, he, that it says whoever does the will of God abides forever. That you don't die. I mean, you're going to abide forever one way or the other. There's heaven and there's hell. It's, th- 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 there's two choices. Don't think that there's purgatory or there's some kind of place that you can hang out later on. There's two choices, okay? 
So I, I don't know about you, but I choose the other. The world here, the world here is talking about the worldly things that are connected to the sphere of evil that is operating in the dominion of Satan around us. So when it's talking about world or it says worldly, it's talking about the things that are connected to the sphere of Satan, the things that don't go away, that go the way of God. It's talking about those things that are counter God. They're opposite God. Okay, so we have to understand what those are because we, the, uh, we can see here the verse in verse 16 is talking about the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So this is what one of the commentaries says. It says, the lust of the flesh, Jesus spoke on adultery begins not with the act, but with the desire. So many times you say, but if you were, you have to be intimately knowing somebody to be committing adultery. That's not true. It says it's the act of the heart. You could look at somebody in lust, and if you start undressing them, and you start thinking, hmm, oh, wow. Oh, I could do this. Oh, that. Oh, wow. That's a committing adultery according to Scripture. That's not me. That's God's word. Now, I believe it and I agree with it, but that's what his word says. Okay, so we have to understand that that's, that's part of it. And so we have to get away from those things. Another is looking at persons in lust in the heart. These words picture any of the desires, but spe- uh, especially the craze for sex. No doubt people... Uh, of ancient Ephesus understood this because they had the pagan religions of the city where it glorified, again, sex. Okay, then there's the lust of the eyes. The lust of the eyes, sin is craving and accumulating possessions, bowing to the God of materialism. It's anything that you put before God that you value. Okay, it doesn't matter what it is. What's your most prized possession that you won't let anybody touch? That's the lust of the eyes. And then there's the pride of life. The pride of life, some versions translate this as pride of possessions. It refers to both an inward attitude and an outward boasting because of an obsession with our status, our profession, our our possessions, I'm sorry, the pride, the word pride may carry a note of exaggeration. Here, this person brags in order to impress people, but the bragging may stretch the truth. It's like somebody goes fishing, right? And they catch a fish. You know, maybe it was about that big, right? And, and what happens with your story, Greg? So he has no fish story. He has other fish stories, though. It doesn't have to be a fish, right? And, and so that fish goes from here to here. And I'm sure he's caught fish because he was fishing at the, the church retreat, you know, when we went camping and stuff like that. So he just lied to me in church. <laughs> oh, he was fishing, not catching. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's another story probably in itself, right? How about them Dodgers? That's right. <laughs> okay, so what am I saying is that we start to bra- be braggadocious. Oh, look at me. Oh, don't you know who I am? Oh, I'm so and so. I used to, I'm the senior pastor of Mount Zion Assembly of God. Oh, I'm the, I'm the senior pastor at Boulder City Assembly. Oh, I'm a youth pastor at, or I work at, or I have these things, and look at me, I've got stature and status. But can I tell you, you can lose any of that stature and status at any given time, and then what are you? You can't brag about nothing anymore. People are going to, w- I, I was watching something yesterday, and my wife walked in and she says, are you watching a Hallmark movie? <laughs> I didn't know it was Hallmark at the time. You know? And so I watched it, and this gal, she was married to this doctor. And she had status. And in this movie, she was out shopping and she was out buying and she comes in and she's nice. 
to people. I mean, she gives, you know, greets the door greeter and stuff where other people kind of look, oh, hey, you know. And she's just a very pleasant, nice person. But she had status because of her husband. She could go out with lunch to lunch with people. She could go out and have a drink with people. But when she lost the status, she called and asked for help because her husband was divorcing her for another woman. It is, right? It is. It's totally. It was totally Hallmark. It said it after I started watching it, you know. And, and so all of a sudden, it's like there's this, there's that, right? And so I want us to understand, all of a sudden, she lost status. She's calling for people to help her out, give her a place to stay, you know, to go to dinner, to lunch. And they all said no. They all said no. So she was upset, and something happened where she walked in front of a car and got hit by a taxi. She ended up at home with her father where she hadn't been in five years, and she didn't want to be there. But she started working in the bakery. Things started changing for her because she had a, a degree. What I'm saying is this, is all of a sudden she started to get an opportunity for status again because somebody wanted to franchise her business. But there were some things that were said, and she turned it down. What am I? And, and all of a sudden, the people that were her friends were reaching out to her again, and she turned them down. She says, I don't want to be like that anymore. See, we have to get to the place where we don't want to be who we were before. I don't want to be the guy that I was before Christ. OK, I don't want to be that person. I want to be the, who the, who the guy who God's called me to be. And that is a man who loves people, that cares about people, that is not going to judge people. But I will hold people accountable. Scripturally, if you're a believer and I know that and you're a part of this church, the pastoral team is to help hold you accountable so that you can move forward and grow and not go backwards. And too many pastors are afraid to hold people accountable. Sometimes you got to hold their feet to the fire because there has to be change. I'm not your judge. I'm not your jury. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is, is that the, the, what we've been reading here says that we're not supposed to be living in the world. If we're living in the world and acting like the world, we're acting a fool, which means that we're living in darkness. Okay. 1 John 18, uh, 2, 18 through 20 says, Children, in the last hour, as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. How many ancient, I mean, Antichrists have come? Therefore, we know that it is the, li the last hour. They, they went out from us. Now, hear this. This is what's really disheartening for me. Okay, because it says they went out from us. That means they went out from the body of Christ. It's not talking about somebody who was not in the body of Christ. They're talking about people who were in the body of Christ who went out. So it's important for us to catch that. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they are all are not of us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and you have all knowledge. Now, to me, I just, uh, this just hit me when you think about Jesus and his disciples, right? There was 12 disciples, but one of them was th with them, but he was not one of them. There was 12. One of them, they were all with him, but one of them was not of him. And that was Judas. He sold him out for his own pride, his own desires. So we, we I just got that just now. So this put it in your 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 ear sockets and your brain here and hold on to. But it goes on to say this in the, the commentaries. I mean, why is it so imperative and very crucial for to know and understand what and why you believe? In Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Why is it so imperative? From the earliest of days, the church in our own, uh, around Ephesus, false teachers, and have been a problem. When Paul did his final farewell in the, uh, to the elders of, of Ephesians church, he warned, I know full well that false teachers will, like vicious wolves, they come among you after 
I leave, not uh, sparing the flock. Even so, you will distort the truth in order to draw a following. Now hear this. This is the problem with the church today. This is the very problem with the church today. We will distort the truth in order to draw a following. Look at some of these churches and what they're willing to say and what they're willing to do and what happens. Listen, the most important thing that we could do is just love Jesus and love others. It is not about these four walls. It's not about this building. It is about the body of Christ. It is about you as the temple of Christ. You are the church that goes outside these walls to minister to others. You know, I had a person tell me one time, you are the only Jesus that I knew. And you're a hypocrite because I messed up. And I had to apologize and ask him to forgive me on more than one occasion. And eventually he said, whenever you become a pastor, let me know where you're at and I'll go to that church. His name was Michael Drayton. Can't, I don't know where he is today, but it's one of those things that we have to realize is that we have to be honest, truthful, and follow the word and not mislead people. It's not about this big gathering. It's about Jesus. Jesus also was, this verse is also talking about keeping people from straying. Jesus had promised to send the Holy Spirit to teach his followers and to remind them of all that, that he had taught. As a result, Christians have the Holy Spirit within them, the anointing, which was Pastor Jerry was talking about, to keeping them from going astray. In addition, they have a God-inspired script. Uh, they have the God-inspired scripture against which they can test questionable teaching. If you listen, as a pastor, I, I've said this. I can't ca countless times. I can't tell you how many times. Don't believe me. Don't believe what I'm saying. Go check it out. Check it out for yourself. Don't believe Pastor Tony. Hey, Pastor Tony's going to get it wrong. I'm going to get it wrong. Pastor Jerry's going to get it wrong. Pa uh, 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 Minister Joe, Pastor Bruce, Pastor Jeff, we're all going to get it wrong. We're going to make mistakes, right? But I can promise you this, there isn't a one of them in that group that I just named that aren't afraid to acknowledge where they got it wrong. If we said something that isn't right, we'll correct it. We'll correct it. If they won't, I will. But I know they will. Because there's too much false teaching. There's too much questioning, questioning going on. It also says, in, in, uh, um, in 1 John 2, 28 and 29, it says, And now little children abide in him, so that when he appears, he may have confidence and not shrink from him in shame at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everything who practices righteousness or everyone who practices righteousness has been born of him, has been born of him. John did not want anyone to lead these believers away from living a constant in constant fellowship with God. That is our plan. That is our desire as pastors is that we want people to live in confidence, in confidence with God. We can give you the tools, but you are the ones, I am the one who has to look at those tools and use them. You have a toolbox. Pastor Jerry has a toolbox. No, he does. It's got just a handful of things in it, right? But I can tell you, don't give him a toolbox to work on something because Right? But you give him a toolbox of biblical, of, of, of biblical tools, and he's all over it. He's a master of the biblical tools. Okay? So sometimes you have to under, know and understand what is in your toolbox. Dave, he has a toolbox, man. That thing's full. He can do a lot of things. I mean, he is a, he is a fixer. Pat is a fixer. Okay? These people that I know... Are they, 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 they are mechanically inclined. Joe is mechanically inclined. He can do those things, right? But if you're not, you've got to call somebody else and say, hey, I need some help. I can't do it. That's where the Holy Spirit comes in. That's where God comes in. 
It also, that verse does not say that everyone who is born of God continually lives righteously. Believers can walk in darkness and in sin. When the child exhibits the nature of his or her parents, people can tell to whom the child belongs. So what is that saying? If you're walking like Jesus, people know you're a Jesus follower. If you're walking like the devil, then he knows that you're a walking in the darkness. Okay? You've got to know who you represent. Good word. You've got to know who you represent. It goes on to say, righteous behavior provides a visible proof of being a Christian. Many people do good deeds, but don't have faith in Jesus Christ. Others claim to have faith and rarely produce good deeds. Christians would be ashamed to be found with a deficit in their faith or behavior when Christ returns. It's like you want to go buy something. You pull out your debit card or your Visa card, and, and it says, eh, decline, because you're in a deficit. But when you have it and you do it, it accepts. We don't want to be in a deficit with God. We're in a deficit with God, not because of anybody else, but because of us. Okay? Because of us. We are the ones that cause the deficit. But true faith always results in good deeds. Those who claim to have faith and who constantly do right are true believers. Listen, it, it doesn't have to be anything big. It could be just saying, saying to somebody, hey, how are you doing? My wife asked me a question on the way here. And I started, I, I started answering the question, and she's like, I really don't want to go there. I said, then why did you ask? If you don't want to know, don't ask. It's like walking up to somebody and saying, hey, Pastor Tony, how are you doing? And she's having a horrible day. It's just horrible. She's just flat out. PJ's just rubbed her the wrong way. She's just downright just frustrated. She really wants to just punch him right in his throat, you know, just one of those throat punches. You know, instead, you ask her how she's doing, right? And she starts to tell you. And you walk away. What have you just told her? I don't care about your problems. Deal with it on your own. Right? That's not what it is. If you ask somebody how they're doing, you have to listen, and then you have to respond. You have to pray for them. That's what love is. That's what love is. I asked Bruce and, and Diana today, how's trailer life and they said we don't have a trailer we have a royal coach a fifth wheel <laughs> you know right because you know it, it was just that hey we're you know we we because they had to move out of their house to move into their trailer i'm not sure if i'm supposed to say that or not but but you know what they said it's going pretty good you know we're managing it's you know we're still growing in it and stuff like that why I, they i asked they told if I walked away, I'd be rude. One, I was really curious, too, how it was going because, you know, it's, it's, I mean, they have a huge trailer, but at the same time, it's tight when you're used to living in a house. And then all of a sudden, you're around each other, and you can't go to separate rooms. <laughs> right? You can't. You, you're there. See, this is why Pastor Jerry was talking about loving your spouse, yeah. honoring your spouse. Said, hey, sign up for the the, 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 the the couple's dinner, you know, make sure. Why? Because you need to have a strong marriage. As I'm concluding, there's a couple of things. And if you want to come up and give me some keys, that would be awesome. We need to know, as Pastor Jerry said several weeks ago, what is your why? What is your why? Because you need to understand that everything that this chapter has talked about is knowing your why. Knowing who Jesus is. Understanding that there's a lot of times where things are to come at you that you don't understand, that you can't see, that you won't grasp. 
And so you have to know what your why is. So I wrote my why out. And my why is he saved me, he loves me, he rescued me, and he protects me in life and death. He is my redeemer. I was faced with death. And I know that it was scary. And so we have to know why we love Jesus. We have to know why, because if we don't know our why, then we're going to fall for anything. We're going to mess up. See, it's not about having a, an argument. It's about having an understanding of who you are and whose you are. Who am I? I'm Pastor Blaine. I'm a teaching pastor at ELC. No, that's not who I am. I am a child of Christ. Striving to make things right in my life and with God and with others. You have to know why you walk with Christ. So I want to encourage you to write that down. I want to encourage you, to, as Pastor Jerry did, to know what your why is. What is your why? You see, because all of us struggle. All of us have hard times. None of us are perfect. Please understand that. We can strive to perfection, but we are not perfect. Because if you were perfect, you would be like Jesus, and you'd be walking on water. You'd walk up to somebody and touch them, and they'd be healed. You'd walk up to somebody and touch them, and they'd be filled with the Holy Spirit in the, in the evidence with speaking in tongues. If you, if you, if you uh, touch them, they, the demons would be released, Right? I mean, if you remember last time I spoke two weeks ago, we talked about that for a moment, that all who ex acknowledge Christ can do these things in Jesus' name, and that was to heal and to set demons free and so on and so forth. But it's through Christ that we can do those things, not in and of ourselves. None of us are healers. None of us are, are those people that can do these things. It's only through Christ. He is the healer. We are a vessel or a tool. So I don't know where you are today in your walk. I really don't. There are those who are walking with Christ in here. There are those who think they're walking with Christ in here. And then there are those who know that they're not walking with Christ in here. Which means that we all have decisions to make. The question is just one question. Are you walking in darkness or are you walking in the light? So I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up. This prayer team is here, not because they're perfect, not because they're special. They're here because this is what God's called them to do. And they want to pray with you. So the question I'm going to ask again, are you walking in the light or are you walking in darkness? If you're not walking in the light, then that means you have the absence of Jesus. That doesn't mean that you're not a believer. I mean, you can sin, and like I, we shared earlier, but you're, you've been forgiven. So if that's you, and this is not a, this is, listen, this is not about pride. This is not about condemnation or conviction or any of these things. It is about getting right with God. Getting right in your relationship. So if that's you, we got people standing in the back, and we have these folks standing up here. And if you would just say, I need prayer. I need to be making it right. I want to encourage you to come down now and just have one of these people pray for you. Father, we come before you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, your goodness, your mercy. And Father, we know that we all have issues. We all have battles. We all have things that we have to deal with. And so, Father God, today we're in that place. And I just pray that you'd help us to know that we need to walk in the light and get out of the darkness. We could be being pulled to the darkness, but we can reject that by just simply reaching to the light. 
in holding on to Jesus. Because there's a tug of war spiritually that's happening 